Hey guys, I've had several people request a video on how to set up OpenVPN AS, which is kind of a server that you set up on your Docker container so that you can then uh, remotely connect to your home network uh, securely. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in this video is how to set up OpenVPN on your uh, Docker or your OpenMediaVault server. Now we're not gonna use uh, anything actually from OpenVPN here. So we're just gonna go ahead and close that. Uh, what we are gonna use is this um, OpenVPN uh, set up from hub.docker.com. Um, it's not real intuitive uh, when you're used to using stacks and setting up containers and that sort of thing, whether it's in Portainer or whatever. Um, this is a bit more convoluted and it's not uh, quite the same as setting up a normal server. So uh, that's why I'm making this tutorial. I've got some notes over here uh, in, in my bottom screen that we're going to use, uh, but we're going to use uh, the information that's given to us uh, from this, uh, like I said, this hub.docker.com uh, page here. Here. This will be linked in the description so that you can uh, come back and get these notes if you need to later on. So uh, the first thing we actually need to do here uh, before we even get started, there's actually two things. Uh, one, we need to uh, set up a domain name. Now, whether you use uh, DuckDNS or you use a, uh, a personal URL, either one is fine. The process will be the same for either one. Um, and you will not need an SSL on this URL to make it work. So just to kind of get that out of the way, you will need uh, a domain name set up again, whether it's your domain name or a DuckDNS domain name, you will need that. Now, the next thing that you will need to do is uh, actually go to your router and or your modem, and you'll need to port forward port 1194 uh, to your server. Uh, so make sure that you've got that set up before we even get started. Uh, trying to do that later will complicate things just a little Bit. So uh, make sure you've got your domain name set up and pointed uh, to your IP address and also make sure that you've got port 1194 port forwarded uh, from the internet to your server. Okay, so once we've got that, let's actually come back over to here and we'll drag up our putty uh, connection here and I'm just going to connect to my Latte Panda. We're gonna go ahead and install it on there this morning. Uh, root and I'm gonna type in my password and I typed that in wrong. It is, uh, it's only 6.13 in the morning. And I haven't had any coffee yet. So you'll have to bear with me just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so here we are on a clean screen. <clears throat> we're logged into Putty here. We're log rather, we're logged into uh, our server here via Putty. And so I'm gonna enter a series of commands here and I'll explain them as I go. Uh, just know that there will be a link in the description that will have uh, all of these commands available. So uh, don't feel like you've gotta try to zoom in and see what's going on here. Just understand that uh, I'm gonna enter these commands uh, based on my notes. These notes will be in uh, a blog post. You can access them in the link in the description down below. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, set a variable here. Now, this is going to be our container name, basically. Um, so, uh, or not our container name, our volume name, rather. I apologize, this is our volume name. So uh, anytime in the future when we see OVPN underscore data um, in these commands, just know that we're actually referring to uh, this right here. Now, you can name this OVPN dash data dash duck VPN, whatever you'd like it to be. This is just kind of what it had uh, in, the, in the thing on on hub.docker.com. I changed it a little bit, but just know that you can name that uh, that volume, whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, so we'll go ahead, oops, and we'll hit enter there. So now it's gonna return nothing. All it did was just set that variable. So the next thing we need to do is actually create the volume. Uh, so we'll go ahead and say docker volume create. We're gonna give it the name of what we set that variable to be. So we'll just go ahead and click enter. So there it created our volume. So uh, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, it seems like we could do a lot of this in, in, in Portainer, for instance, um, but I'll show you here in just a moment why we can't do that. So uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're actually going to uh, tell um, our container uh, here what URL to use here. Uh, basically we're saying, hey, run this uh, container name for et cetera, OpenVPN, uh, log driver is none, uh, and then we're, it's telling it to pull from the OpenVPN on hub.docker.com. Hub um, and then we're just saying, hey, use this URL 
for the setup. Now, this is a DuckDNS URL. Uh, of course, you could set up your own personal URL if you wanted to do it that way as well. Uh, just make sure you only enter in uh, the, the, the the domain name. So if you've got a subdomain dot domain name dot com or whatever, enter that, but don't enter like www dot, don't enter HTTP or HTTPS, uh, just the, the subdomain, the domain and the extension is all you need right here. Uh, so once we've got that, we can go ahead and uh, hit enter. So now it's saying it can't find it locally, so it's going to get, go ahead and pull everything. Uh, so let it do that, and then uh, then it's done just that fast. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to run another Docker command here. Uh, make sure I don't need to change anything. That all looks just fine. So we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, then we'll go ahead and press Enter. Again, this is just setting up more of the Docker here, or the, the container rather. So now we're, it's asking us to enter a password. Now this is a password we're gonna have to enter a few times. Uh, make it something uh, secure. Uh, don't don't enter something simple here. The more complicated this is, the better. So um, go ahead and enter that. Like so. Now we're gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call this uh, dbtech VPN. Um, you can give this name whatever you want it to be. This is just something easy to recognize. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and enter that and I'll press uh, enter on my keyboard. Um, now, depending on the, the, the processing power of your CPU, uh, it's generating this, uh, this uh, certificate. So give it a minute and uh, let it go through its process here um, and then we'll continue when it's done. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and re-enter our password again. And again, all right, let me make sure. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here <clears throat> is we're gonna tell uh, OpenVPN to use port 1194. So we're gonna, we'll go ahead and paste in that command. We'll press enter there. Okay, good to go. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, generate a client certificate without a passphrase. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there. Again, we're gonna enter this, we're gonna enter our password. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to uh, run a command that will retrieve um, the uh, client, or sorry, the yeah, the client uh, certificate that we'll use to install uh, the connection on our uh, remote device, in this case, our phone. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually open up something like FileZilla. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and it's gonna do that, there we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in our server's IP address. And we're gonna type in root because we're gonna log in as root and our root password. And we're gonna change that to port 22, just like so. And then right here um, is the client name.ovpn file that we just generated. You can see the date uh, is just a few minutes ago. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, I'm gonna drag this over to my desktop. And of course it put it somewhere else. All right, there's that. So, okay, so now that we've got our uh, the file on our desktop, what I wanna do is open up uh, Google Drive here and I've got a folder called VPN. I'm just gonna drag that in there and then we're gonna go ahead and move over to my phone for a few minutes. But before we go back over to my phone, we're gonna jump over to our containers in Portainer and here we can see we've got an open VPN and it uh, named the container Sleepy Torvalds. Um, it will generate a, a unique name each time uh, you, you set this up. So you're gonna have to go in and probably look for uh, this Kyle Mana slash OVPN or OpenVPN uh, to figure it out unless you don't have much in here. And then that one just may jump out at you, but we'll go ahead and click on logs. Uh, here we can see that uh, it looks like everything here is up and running. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just make that half the screen wide and we'll go ahead and minimize that. And then we'll jump over to my oh, over here to my phone and we'll take a look. Okay, so here we are on my phone and we can see that I've got an open VPN connect uh, application installed on my phone. You will wanna make sure you've got that installed. Sorry, I didn't mention that earlier, uh, but you will need the open VPN connect application there. Uh, but before we do that, what I'm gonna do is come over to my Google folder here. I'm gonna go to Google Drive. And then we'll scroll uh, down here to my VPN folder. So I'll click it and then I'll say download like so. And there is a downloading, so we'll give that a second. Great. 
Um, and then what we'll do is we'll come back over to uh, open VPN here. And now notice that I'm not connected to a wireless network. If you're connected to your home network while this is going on, it's not gonna work correctly. So what we're gonna do um, is I'm just gonna come down here to the plus symbol at the bottom. I'm gonna click on file. And then right here, uh, it's in my downloads folder by default. So there is client name.ovpn. We'll go ahead and click on import there. Um, and there you can see that all of that looks correct. So we'll go ahead and click on add. And then if everything works correctly, uh, it should log me in. And just like that, uh, we are connected. Uh, you can see that my phone is connected on this end. We can actually see over here that it, uh, it connected on this end over here as well. Uh, you can see the IP address from which I connected. That is the IP address that uh, my carrier gave me for this. So uh, that tells us that we are connected and good to go uh, just to make sure that everything's working. You can also see the little icon up at the top of my screen there. Um, so what we can do then is just disconnect. Um, that disconnected. You can also see that, the, that it exited over here on the server. So that means we're good to go. Okay guys, so that's all there is to setting up an open VPN uh, container on your server so that you can connect to your network remotely and securely. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That would help me out a bunch. If you like these kinds of videos, definitely get subscribed. I've got more content like this coming out with uh, new things to do with your server, that sort of thing. If you're interested in that, definitely get subscribed. Um, if you wanna help support the channel, there's a couple of links in the description down below uh, where if you wanna do like a one-time tip, there's a coffee link. Also, if you want to become a patron uh, over there on Patreon, there's a link for that as well. Uh, I really do appreciate the uh, the folks who have decided to become patrons in the last couple of weeks. I really do appreciate that. Uh, just know there are a few different levels uh, that you can subscribe to. Uh, the $5 level will give you access to a uh, patrons only Discord server if you're interested in that. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to say in this video. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.